Hello everyone. Hello everyone, I'm Quentin Perez. I'm a PhD student in software engineering at Euromove Digital Health in Motion, where I'm under the supervision of Christelle Hurtado and Silva Botti. So in this video, I'm going to present our study, Bug or Not Bug, that is the question. As an introduction, I will give you some elements about the context. The main goal addressed in this study is the binary classifications of software tickets. More precisely, automatically distinguish tickets describing bags from other issues. To do so, we have developed a supervised approach based on the curated datasets of tickets produced by Herzig et al. The dataset used in this study is composed of 5,591 tickets coming from three popular Java open source projects. HTTP client, Jackrabbit, and Lucent Java. Among the 5,591 tickets, 1,940 are labeled bug and 3,651 are labeled non-bug. Six studies use the dataset of Herzig et al. to perform binary bug ticket classification. Here, the table presents different work identified. Only three studies use the K-fold as evaluation protocol, other studies use the less robust protocol, a training test fit. The worst cross-project measures is obtained by Queen et al. using a training test fit. Best results are those of Terchanakul et al. using a robust evaluation protocol. Hence, we choose the study of Terchanakul et al. as reference to compare our results. Corpus processing is composed of five steps. The first step is the tokenization, where textual data is divided into text units called tokens. From these tokens, n-grams are created. After several tests, it appeared that using unigrams, bigram, tree, and three grams give better performance. Stop word and how words drop it. Tokens with high occurrence rates in the corpus often stop words are not relevant for classifications. Hence, Tokens appearing in more than 50% of the tickets of the corpus are filtered. Conversely, tokens with very low occurrence rates are also often not relevant. Thus, tokens appearing in less than two tickets from the corpus are also filtered. The importance of the summary is multiplied by three to increase its weight in the corpus. Iterative tests prove that duplicating three times the contents of the ticket summary produce the best result. N-gram frequency calculation. Occurrences for each unigram, bigram, or trigram is counted. TFID IF normalization. In our study, TFID IF is used to wave and normalize N-gram frequencies in the corpus. Then, we perform a feature, selec a feature selection. The number of features is considering unigrams, bigrams, and trigrams is huge close to 100,000. Hence, best representative features are selected using a key-square test to reduce the dimension to 30,000 features. This test measures the association relation between our categorical variables, bug or non-bug, and our features. Several classifiers are compared in order to select the best treated one. Choosing correct values for hyperparameters is crucial to have the best possible prediction. To do so, a grid search algorithm is used. Grid search is a brute force method that searches for optimal parameter value combinations using Cartesian project between parameter value sets. Finally, classifiers are trained with the previously selected 30,000 features and evaluated by a tenfold. As presented by the table here, the multilayer perceptron produces the best result as evaluated by the F1 measures, and is therefore selected as our classification technique. Hyperparameter values cannot be fine-tuned by the coarse grid search. A precise classifier optimization needs to traverse a continuous value interval for each hyperparameter to better explore the search space. To do so, our MLP classifier is further optimized using a genetic algorithm. Three MLP hyperparameters are optimized with the genetic algorithm. First is the number of features. 
the number of features corresponds to the size of the features vectors used to train and test the MLP classifiers. Second is the number of hidden layers for the MLP. And the third is the hidden layer size that is the numbers of neurons on each hidden layer. As presented by the figure on the right, smaller population size with 50 and 100 individuals have the best results, while larger population have the worst results. These differences can be due to the parent selection mechanism we implemented. As parents are randomly selected in a population subset based on fixed proportion of the best individuals, smaller population entails smaller parent sets containing on average better fitted individuals. Genetic algorithm executed with 50 individuals and 150 generations returns an optimized individual with a configuration that chooses seven hidden layers with size varying from 9 to 15 and 37,362 input features. Our approach obtains a gain of 0.016 of the mean F1 measure over all the projects as compared with the scores obtained by Chern Chanakul et al. Our solution improves results on two out of three projects, HTTP Client and Jackrabbit. A low deterioration is observed on Lucent Java. F1 measure on cross project is much improved, increasing from 0.814 to almost 0.9. Our results are not only high but also well balanced between recall and precision, thus highlighting the quality of our proposed classifier. These results open many perspectives. A first idea is to further improve classifier quality by optimizing more parameters with the genetic algorithm. A more practical perspective is to experiment the use of automatic classification as an assistant during the ticket reduction by developers. Thanks for your attention. By optimizing. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, we just a couple of uh, seconds before we went live, uh, our, we lost our speaker. Uh, so if he joins us, it will be my pleasure to ask the questions. Uh, if not, I would like to uh, encourage you to post the questions in the uh, page chat, such that Kantak can uh, answer them um, in minutes. So, I'm, uh, Gemma, thank you very much for your question. I'm also I'm going to uh, ask my question there. Just a sec. Here we are. Yeah. I would also like to say that uh, in two minutes, we will have our closing session. Uh, in the same way as we had two opening sessions, we have two closing sessions. Uh, and we will also have uh, an another best paper from the replications and negative results track. And probably the most exciting part, uh, the welcome message from um, our successors from uh, the organization team from ICPC 2022. So please stay with us and uh, watch the nice videos uh, Gabriele, Sonia and Venera have prepared about Pittsburgh and what they would like to do next year. I think our author is not in the cloud. I, I haven't found him. Right. So um, this live session ends in 30 seconds. And um, I would like to encourage everyone again to um, join the closing ceremony and, of course, the social event.